So firstly, if you're new to my channel, hi. I created Riviga um, and we provide cosmetic makers with ingredients, recipes, CPSRs, which are cosmetic safety reports. And we also help you with regulatory and business support. For in-depth guidance and exclusive formulas and recipes, then I recommend my Patreon, um, which is aimed at guiding you through learning to formulate cosmetics as well as starting and running a cosmetics business in the UK. Anyway, on with today's video. So this liquid lipstick is a bit of an experiment. Uh, there are many ways to make liquid lipstick and I'm working my way through various ingredients to get, them know, to, get to know them a bit better. Um, this is all with the aim of taking the best parts of all of these formulas to create the perfect formula. Um, though everyone will be different in what they are looking for, so I hope that some of these experiments help you out. It's an anhydrous formula, meaning that you don't need a preservative because it doesn't contain water. Um, I'd advise a shelf life of around 6 to 12 months, but you can do your own testing and this may all change depending on oil choice. Um, remember that you need to do a stability test and obtain a CPSR before gifting or selling your finished products. Um, for those of you new to formulating, formulas are always written in percentage and then converted to grams for a batch. Uh, I've got a calculator listed below um, that will do this for you if you have trouble working this out yourself. That's linked below. This recipe is for a 50 gram batch. So here's our formula. Um, the first ingredient is C12 to 15 alkyl benzenate, if I'm saying that correctly, 50% uh, or 25 grams. It's an emollient, which is softening and texture enhancing. It's an ester that is soluble in oil and it gives a silky and non-greasy feel to the finished product. It's suggested that it may also have antimicrobial properties. It also helps keep the ingredients dispersed within the formulation. Next we have silicon resin, 1.5%, 0.75 grams. It's a texturizer and film former that provides a waterproof barrier and prevents transfer. It also provides a non-tacky and silky feel when applied. Then in phase B, we have castor oil, 15% or 7.5 grams. It's an emollient, thickener and humectant and it helps the lips to retain moisture and prevent water loss, promoting hydration. Then we have good old candelilla wax, 10% or five grams, a thickener which enhances the feel of the finished product, giving a smooth application, acting as a binder for the other ingredients and improving spreadability of the final product. It also has moisturizing qualities. Next is Caranuba wax, 2% or one gram. Also a thickener, which helps to stabilize the formula and gives staying power to the finished product. Uh, we use this in small amounts for liquid lipstick as it's a very hard wax with a high melting point. Then we add Cetyl alcohol, 0.5%, 0.25 grams. It's an emollient which soothes dry skin and thickens and stabilizes cosmetic formulations. It gives the end product a more luxurious feel. In a lipstick, it aids in the color staying power. Phase C, all on its own, kaolin. 1.5%, 0.75 grams. It's a texturizer that also helps to give the matte texture. First in phase D, we have isododecane, 5.5%, 2.75 grams. It's a synthetic hydrocarbon, which is used for its emollient properties. It enhances feel, locks in moisture, and helps to give the finished product a matte texture. It also aids in the staying power of makeup products. For phase D, we've got our pigment blend, 10%, five grams. These are lakes, oxides, and natural pigments, whichever you want, giving an intense color payoff. These will be the main base color for the product. Then in our final cool down phase, we've got mica color, 2% or one gram. It's used to enhance the color and also add a bit of tonal variation. Then flavor oil, 1.5%, just to improve the scent of the product. And lastly, our old friend vitamin E oil, 0.5% or 25 grams. It's an antioxidant that also soothes and prevents cell damage.
Okay, let's get started. So take phase A, both ingredients. So you've got your C1215 alkyl benzenate and your silicon resin. Add the silicon resin into the alkyl benzenate and give it a stir and put to one side. Now take your beaker with your castor oil and add all of your phase B ingredients to that. Give it a stir, put to one side. Now you need to put both phase A and phase B separately into a water bath, bain marie um, or on a heating plate if you've got one and just allow to melt until they've everything has dissolved in each one. Um, the silicon resin does take some agitating to get to fully dissolve and it will take a while so be patient with that and keep stirring and breaking it up as you go. Phase A mustn't be heated more than 70 degrees C, um, so make sure that both reach the same temperature before you add them together. Once they've reached the same temperature, you can pour phase A into phase B, which I clearly demonstrate here by blocking the camera. Sorry about that. Then stir, just to combine. Don't worry about the bubbles for now, they, they will disperse. Your kaolin clay and mix thoroughly. The reason I'm not adding this with the other colour is because if you want to make this just as a base that you can then use later, um, then add the kale in now and then let it cool and then add your uh, vitamin E and then you can store it as a base to use later. If you're making a batch all in one go, then move to phase D and add your pigment blend and your isododecane and mix well. Next is phase E. Um, you can add the mica before it's fully cooled down, but I just add them all in this phase. Um, so add in your mica powder to add the tone and then give it a good stir. And then you can add your flavor oil and your vitamin E once it's reached 40 degrees C. Stir it really well and then you'll need to work fast so it's still liquid when you fill your tubes. So I did a great job of blocking the camera, um, sorry about that. Use a syringe. Um, if you can't suck the liquid up the syringe like normal, then you can take the end out and fill it using a little spatula and then put the end back in. Um, it should still be liquid enough at 40 degrees um, to do that. Just don't fill your uh, tubes until the top. Leave about a gap of a centimeter, centimeter and a half, um, just because the air displaces when you put the stopper and the wand in.
and there you go that's an example of what we've made um, I've written some notes on it um, overall I'm quite pleased with it uh, it feels nice when it's going on and it isn't sticky when it's being worn um, it does need blotting but once it's dried on it seems substantially transfer proof um, it doesn't feel like it's drying out the lips and it didn't crack over time which is a bonus um, the scent from the flavor oil was pleasant at 1.5 percent so I'd leave it around that level um, the C1215 alkyl benzenate supposedly stabilizes added scents and helps them to come through in the finished product as far as I can tell this seems quite evident because the scent that I put in um, I used coconut um, it did come through very well um, if I was making it again I would probably up the pigment percentage um, also the isododecane and the silicon resin slightly um, just to give it a better colour payoff and also make it slightly more transfer proof and waterproof um, this will also help slightly with the, slightly more with the matte texture um, I do like it though I'd wear it as it is um, it's also easily removed with my cellar water makeup remover um, I made this a few days ago so looking at it today three days later um, it's not changed uh, other than be a bit more set in the tube it's easily mixed though with the wand and any slight clumps probably due to the addition of the harder carnauba wax are quite easily spreadable so it's nothing that I haven't seen in other liquid lipsticks that I've purchased um, I think I'd market it more as a moisturising liquid lipstick as it is. Um, I definitely want to increase the staying power of it, so I'll be experimenting a bit more with film formers next time. Um, if you have any suggestions, then drop them below. Um, but other than that, read the blog post that goes along with this because I've given a bit more detail on ingredients and, and how to formulate a liquid lipstick. And hopefully this would have been useful to some of you. Thank you.